enthusiasm I want, you should be enthusiastic because we have an awesome panel coming up. My name is Dan Casey from Nerdist.com. You're out here to see me. You're here to see our awesome guests. So please, guys, put your hands together for two of the stars of Cinemax's Outcast. Oh, not Outcast, excuse me. That's coming later. You should watch that, too. Cinemax's Banshee. We have Eliza Dushku and Ivana Milicevic. Thank you guys for being here today. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank yeah. you. Hi, and thank you. Yeah. What's up, you guys? So, how's your uh, how's your Comic Con going so far? It just started. Just right started. now. Me, yeah. This what is it. And so far, so good. <laughs> oh yeah. What a way to kick it off. Yeah. So it's tell me. Nerdist crew. Yeah. I love you guys. And yeah, we love you guys. So what a coincidence. Hi, Chris. Wherever you are. Yeah, he's uh, lurking somewhere in the air vents. He's Everywhere. hosting every panel in the building right now. <laughs> At the same time? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, holograms. The Tupac yes. technology from Coachella, they use that. Yeah. <laughs> and that Indian Prime Minister, too. He seriously rocks the yeah. hologram technology. Oh, exactly. He's is been he called, here today? He is. He's, uh, he's operating the technology. He's been called the I'm Tupac sorry, of Indian politics. Sure I'm looking out for my girl here. Thanks. Okay, yeah. Just, we're good, we're good. I think I'm good, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So let's talk about Banshee. You guys are both on it. Uh, you are joining the cast this season. You have been a staple of the series. Yes. And this is the fourth and final uh, season of the show. Yes, it is. So what's that like? What's that like sort of as things begin to wind down? Eliza and I were just talking about how this is my first time having a show that was four seasons, so you really get, you really become attached to it. And it's bittersweet. You know, on one hand, my body can't handle doing all that physical stuff anymore, almost. And on the other hand, I don't want it to end because I love the people that we have, that we work with. I love the material. It's so out there and bonkers, and I love it. So I'm going to miss it. It's hard. Awesome. Well, what's it like for you coming in to this show as it begins to wind down? Um, well, coming into a show that's established, I, I did that once before, and, and I like it. I mean, it takes a little bit of pressure off of me because everyone already <laughs> loves the show. And, Similar to on Buffy, I get to sort of come in and and shake things up and and um, but then finding out it was the last season, I just really didn't want to fuck it up, you know. Or like I wanted to meet everybody's level and uh, and really like have that reverence and that respect for because it's a it's a great show and, and I'm such a fan and and all these other actors on the show are so they're so extraordinary that. Uh, Thank you. We were so excited to have you. You're I just, awesome. We just wanted to fit in. Yeah. So it was a welcoming cast. They didn't make you feel weird for coming in. I welcomed her Harper. Yeah. Right. Did you feel welcome? She. This yeah, you were was welcome. like DMing me very welcoming <laughs> advances from like right when the news broke. Yeah. <laughs> we got very close. She's a. She's like a woman's woman. You know. Like I am. They talk a lot about girls. like guys, girls, and I was a guys girl for a lot of years. But as I've gotten older, I've realized that like. Being a woman's sisters. woman is on par, if not doper sometimes, so like really, yeah. To be both. Really, yeah. to be both. Where yeah. you can hang with dudes and you can totally be a sister to your wife. A people person. Being a sister. The guys have each other's sisters, backs. Support. And mama bear. Yeah. yeah, I'm a big mama bear. Awesome. Um, so what can we look forward to uh, this season of Banshee? Uh, Eliza. I love the character that Eliza plays this year. I didn't get to act with her at all. This was true and annoying. Really but her annoying. character, whoever watches the show here, it is so, so good with such an awesome, I've never before seen Dark Side. But have you guys seen the clips of her, like, running through, like, with her ponytail, like, with the flames behind her? Like, she's the serious badass of the show, let's be honest. This I learned it from watching you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I learned from... Okay, we're both badasses that's together, that's why we're here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So, well, we tell get to your character, Veronica Dawson, can you tell us anything about her? I can and I can't. There's, like, stuff I'm not supposed to say. I hate saying she has a twist, but, but nobody comes to Banshee without, like, skeletons in their closet. So she's got, she's got 99 problems. And, and most and, uh, of them are skeletons. Yeah, and uh, so she's... She's a FBI agent. She's very. Uh, she play, doesn't play by everyone's rules. Similar to Hood, they have a connection. Um, and then more crazy stuff happens. Nice. Right. We're. We're. I think we're allowed to say though that there's like exploration of a satanic underground. 
There's that. Okay, wait, yeah. Satanic Underground, yeah. tell me more. Yeah, you probably didn't know the Banshee had that. Well, it does. Yeah. At long last, fourth season, perfect time for Satan to make his I woke up in a dungeon one one episode, and I was like, sick, here we go. Was and that a set, or did all... you just get lost? <laughs> it was a set. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, let me say in advance, you're welcome. Yeah. Well, what, what, you know, we know what's coming up for Veronica, but what about your character, Carrie Hopewell? What can we expect to see from her, apart from running in general badassery? Uh, right. She's going to try to fix the whole world. I mean... It's not going to probably yeah. work, but that's that's what she wants. She wants to fix everything because she's mourning the loss of her husband, and she gets more bruises. You know, the, the usual. And there's fire. <laughs> I will say there's fire. And so, fire. are you guys all wrapped filming this season? Okay. Did you? Is the is the arc that you wound up with? Is that was that your ideal arc? How you envisioned it, sort of wrapping up for your character? I mean, yes and no, because I didn't want, you know, I don't sort of want it to end mm -hmm. in a way, but uh, you have such ownership of, the, of your character when really it's the writer that really owns it. We can only share the character at best. So no, I, I, this is sounding like I'm not happy with it. I'm just not happy that it's over, <laughs> but it's, I think it's a satisfying finish. I think. We'll see. Yeah. Well, it's nice. You have to, uh, you have to put a period at the end of the sentence somewhere, so may as well. Right. Yeah. Lest you have a run I love how like steely your character is and like how I mean your character could very easily have the sads about a lot of stuff and like just be very like just to be like wallow in some serious earned self pity, you know, and your character is like it just it like just feeds like the steel. But it's just good. I love you. Thank you, Eliza. It's the truth. I love you. Well, what's uh, how's it been to see your character evolve over these past four seasons? How like, is it? Has what your character is now is that what attracted you to the character originally, or did that change as you sort of got to explore this part? I mean, for me, the origin part of characters is often the most fun to play because they're, you know, like the first season and the second season when we're laying down the layers, when she's fighting for her family, when there's like a father, there's kids, there's this love, there's this long lost love, there's this husband, like that's always even more fun than as it goes because then, you know, I mean for me, even for comics, the origin stories are my favorite part. Then they get into further adventures, but you want to know how it all began. So, yes, but my first seasons were my favorite, whereas we had your origin story in season four, right, in a way, like, in a way. Awesome. Now you both play badasses on screen, um, and this has been a really great, oh, there we go. Picture, picture perfect. Good, good looking out. See, I'd have to fend for myself. I'm a dance dan. Um, anyway, so we have, uh, we, this has been like a great year for seeing badass ladies on screen, both of you included. Um, wondering, when you guys were growing up, who, what, what sort of uh, figures did you look up to uh, in the media? Like uh, on in, like film, TV, etc. I, I was thinking about this yesterday, actually, because there was a time when women were not really doing action, and not to the degree that we do it now. They weren't really fighting. But I remember, I think the French Le Femme Nikita was, as far as I know, the first time a girl was the badass. She drove it. And then we had Rene Russo that was in um, uh, Legal Weapons and subwords. And little by little it grew. And then I think Angelina Jolie did a lot, and Mila Jovovich, and then it started with like Buffy. Girl. So before that, I kind of, when it comes to badassery, I guess we looked up to men that were in, like Superman or Wonder Woman, like superheroes. Mm -hmm. At least in the comic world, women were badasses. Yeah. But that was in pictures, and what it didn't exist. Like, what was the first superhero hero movie? Super For me, I, I remember, I mean, I mean, I started. When I was 12 years old, I, I did True Lies with Jim Cameron, and I and I feel like uh, Sigourney Weaver and Linda Hamilton were yes. two big ones for me. And watching those those badass broads yes, <laughs> in action exactly. and, and, uh, uh, was like really yeah. And I mean, I have a I have also had my my mother who's a who's actually here. She's back. She's right there. My mom. That's Mama Judy. She's responsible for. A good deal of my badassery. She's just a fierce feminist woman, and, and she's a woman that loves women. And and um, she taught me all my fighting moves. Oh wow! You don't you wouldn't believe me just by looking at her. But leather pants, the whole deal. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, w I would say 
Sigourney and Linda were big. Yeah, that's right, Sigourney. You yeah, well, and she's in the power the loader. Wars. Come on, that's amazing. Right. Yeah. Um, well, you guys have both become staples of sort of like genre, sci-fi, action. Are you drawn to that in particular? Do you feel like representation has changed on screen for women in, that, in those genres in particular? Yeah. Because of the reasons we said, there's just like, it, it became more okay. There wasn't as much of it as there is now for women. Mm -hmm. Do you find that you guys are drawn to those roles more? Sort of like that I genre in particular? I love that stuff. Like, obviously I love drama and I love to act, but honestly, I am a nerd myself, and I love nerds and comic nerds and sci-fi nerds. My dad and I were big into martial arts movies and sci-fi movies, so it's something that I did want to do. I like crazy costumes. I want to have my face painted with like metal coming out. I want to wear metal clothes. Like I genuinely like that. So yes, I am drawn to it. What about you? Um, I didn't know how drawn I was to it until after I played um, Faith on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I just, yeah. like, I got, yeah, a couple of Faith fans in the house. A couple more. Hi. Um, and watching the way people responded to the way Joss was writing women, and, um, and then, you know, there was a time when people would say, like, well, Liza, aren't you nervous? You're going to be uh, typecast as, and I was like, well, I can think of a lot worse things to be typecast as than, you know, like a super physical, super um, badass. I mean, it's becoming yeah. like... <laughs> badass. But, um, hi! I know him. He's, he's a friend. Um, but I would also say that, um, yeah, I mean, it, I think that there were there was a time when they would when studio execs would go like, oh, we can't do that, and, and, and no, we should have the guy save the day, and no, we shouldn't have her save him because he's the star of the show, you know, and it's, and more and That's more, changed. when you do it, and shockingly, audiences love that sometimes, and like, I remember doing a film, and they wanted to give, like, the big final kill to the male lead, and I threw a fucking tantrum. And, I mean, it was a good thing to throw a tantrum for. It wasn't a diva thing. It was because I cared and because it was important. And I insisted that, character. you know, yeah, that this character, I'm like, come on. And uh, way down the road, they were like, that scene where you killed him tested, like, through the roof. It tested the highest thing in the movie. And I was like, thank you. So people respond and speak, and then that changes the, the system, I think. Yeah. Exactly. Right? It changes the conversation. It... it, it, it it makes people okay with that happening sometimes or becoming more the norm. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, men can still, we, we still want them big and strong and doing sure. it as well. It just, let us have a few kills. Share the kills, Spread man. The kills. <laughs> Spread the love, share the kills. You want to kill. Yeah, well, I think change is scary no matter what it is, and yes. I think people took a long time or they're still finally opening their eyes to the fact that, hey, everyone can kick ass, so why not have more of that in general? Share the kills. Yeah, exactly, share the kills. Hashtag share the kills, join the conversation Hashtag today. Um, so you, you both, if I'm not mistaken, you both have worked with Joss Whedon in the past, correct? Yes, me only once, but there's so many Buffy fans. I played Sam, Riley's wife. Right? I mean, that, there's a Riley. Yeah, I, I wasn't Riley, I was Sam. Yes, I was. And I, but it was one episode, and like the Buffy, thank you. We got a big little fan over yeah, there. Yeah, he loves that episode. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it was amazing. I did one episode, and I ended up in the comics, as this character ended up in the comics. Like, Buffy fans are really, really vocal and big. We got a, we got a yes over here. Old wing over here. It's my peoples. Yeah. Our peoples. So what about, you work with Joss much more than me. What about, you mentioned uh, the way in which Joss writes women. What about that spoke to you? What about that you think resonates with audiences? Um, they're they're smart, for one. I mean, I think that even as the kind of trend of strong women has taken off, it's not its not just that a woman can pick up a car and throw it, or that, you know, she walks around in leather pants, like, with a chip on her shoulder, acting tough. It's like, there's other, there's many different forms of, of being smart and cunning and, and you know, and having tough and humanity that makes you, that makes you strong. And so I, I think Joss really just tapped into that and also you know we're strong through like overcoming adversity and 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 
overcoming obstacles and, and horrible things that might happen to us in our lives. And, and I think Joss really, really tuned into that. We're all stronger for making it through high school was the theme of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, and, you know, like our sexuality and, and race and all these things. And so um, it's, it's, it can be few and far between the people that really tap into that as opposed to just thinking it's about, you know, something else. Yeah. Um, quick tangent. You mentioned Acting Tough, which made me think of Hanging Tough, which made me think of New Kids on the Block, which made me think of a note that I have here, because if my research is correct, Ivana, you were a member of a New Kids on the Block tribute group called Troy Kids on the Block. Is this true? I do not know. It isn't true. What? Why is it on your I do not know what that is or where it came from. I will say that in high school, if sure, there was a time, she does. I would, I would own something that awesome. You are. You got me mistaken. No, but we did. I mean, if there was a talent show, I would do a dance number, mm -hmm. not even that I'm amazing, but I love to dance, so if they'll let me be on stage, I will go on it and dance. So we did like, I don't even think I did Hangin' Tough, I think I did, um, I thought we did Michael Jackson song, so I don't know where that came oh, from. Oh man, I can't believe someone lied on the And I hope I forgot something, and I hope that there's video of something, and I forgot, yeah. I down. So then what tribute group were you a part of? Well, we just one time for this one talent show, did this medley of Michael ja Jackson songs like Dirty Diana and we did like we did a dance with that and whatever other songs were on that album and that's the closest thing I could think of that I mean I used to love New Kids on the Block in high school obviously yes in Boston, high school not a monster yeah exactly yeah okay I, so. I saw her dance one night when we were filming Banshee it was magical is there a dance sequence in this season? Uh, we wish. It wasn't on oh, camera. Man. On a very special musical episode. I know. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. We always joke about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, Eliza, looking back uh, at Dollhouse, you know, you look at shows like Orphan Black that are finding success now. Do you find that a show like that was sort of ahead of its time? Um, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was definitely ahead of something or behind something, I think, are... Uh, you know, there were a number of factors that I that I think just kind of killed that show. I mean, our it, it, we were the first show that they started measuring DV, DVR numbers for, mm -hmm. and um, most people were DVRing us on our Friday night at 9 p.m. time slot. Um, and also, I think the the network uh, that we were on sort of got. I mean, it's Joss has been pretty public about it. I'm kind of public about it. it kind of got cold feet, like really past the point of when cold feet would be appropriate and they sort of went like wait a minute this is a show about human trafficking we can't put this on and we were like no shit you just figured that out um <laughs> we didn't read the script so yeah then you know it was like reshoot the pilot and so things got things kind of just got uh convoluted early early on and then we we had a hard time like grasping and, and getting our footing again but um, yeah, no, I, I think Orphan Black is a, is a phenomenal show, and um, it's, you know, surprisingly, as you said, like, lies on the internet. Um, ideas are kind of recycled and morphed into different things, and, and I, I get excited to see, to see them succeed and be great. Yeah. Have you guys noticed sort of a change in the type of scripts and roles that are coming your way? As uh, you know, as these different roles, especially genre projects, continue to evolve. Well, because of all the different uh, platforms mm -hmm. now, there's so much content you can end up on Netflix or Hulu or I mean, there, there's so there's a lot of content out there. I feel like it's changing because I think networks have to compete and and, and cable networks have to compete with the pay pay cable for eyeballs. Oh yeah. So things are definitely changing. Women, the roles for women are changing. The women of the roles for women of color are changing. Like everything is, which is good. It's a good thing. We want to be more diverse and and, and, and cover, just touch every pocket of the world. Yeah, and I, entertain those pockets. Exactly. Yeah. I, just look at a show like How to Get Away with Murder. Like you might not have had that five years ago, three years ago, but now. Thank you, Shonda. Yeah. Oh my God. Thank you, Bay Shonda. That was <laughs> Queen Shonda. Yes. Um, so. Are there, sort, are there sort of a type of character or any sorts of characters that you like to see portrayed on screen that you maybe aren't seeing now? Well, more, <laughs> more of 
of it. Keep going. Like, well, you know, just more, more. There's pro because we're so all in our own bubbles. There's probably whole factions of actors that are amazing or something that are maybe from Sri Lanka or something that are like, we're not getting our chance or whatever that are made like whatever little part of the world that that we're so up in our own story and business that we're not seeing right now, like I can't wait for that stuff to come out that we don't even know because we're in our own mm -hmm. we're like, oh it's hard for women. Well what about women of color? It's harder for them or it's harder for like some other I don't know I don't even know where. Do you know what I'm saying? No, I, I do. Like, there's this whole world for Mauritius that, or something that we. Where are those actors? Yeah. The where are the where Mauritian are their actors? Stories? Where are all the Albanian actors? Where I'll are the tell Albanians? you. My documentary, Dear Albania, is coming out right now. What? Is it? Is it really? really? If it's anybody, right now? it's it's just started airing this week. Where? But, um, no, tell us about PBS. it. Yes. It's called Dear Albania. It's a little movie I did with my brother about. Amazing. About Albania and, and Albanians and, and the culture and the and the people and the and it's uh, for the next two months going to be airing on PBS and it was you know that was a movie that I it was important for me to make because as you said I mean awesome. just there the world is full of stories and full of people and full of people that uh, this this woman that's in our movie she's like the Albanian Madonna and when we interviewed her about like Delicious. what does it mean to be Albanian and like. Albanian pride and and you know just sometimes is that border on like a creepy nationalist like thing and and she's like look we're not for me we're not saying we're the best we're just saying we exist like people Oprah said it once people just want to be heard you mm -hmm. know people d just want to sort of feel like like their story which is different maybe similar in some ways to someone else's story but the the things that are unique and special about them are are going to come through and so. Um, so yeah, it was it was a passion project of mine to like to show the beauty of, of the Albanian people, and, and we get to do Love that, it. and I'm really I'm really proud of it. That's so awesome. support. It's on PBS yeah. now for the next two yeah. months. You said. Yeah, Fantastic. and if you donated to like the Kickstarter that helped us make it, thank you so much. Like you contributed to people awesome. being heard. So that's can, can makes I ask you Eliza better. something? You certainly may take it away. Because you have a, a a documentary on PBS, does that mean that you've got ins for you and me to go to Sesame Street? I'm not even kidding. It's a real um, question. I really want to go. I really can, do. Yeah, we can we can talk. We'll, we'll, talk. Talk. we'll talk back. I really want to be on Sesame. You should already <laughs> have it in because they're moving to HBO. What? Yeah, what? Sesame Street is going to HBO. Really? Yeah. Next five seasons are going to be on HBO. What kind of HBO. things are those Muppets going to be How doing? How do you know this? And I don't know this. I have to know it. It's my job. They're gonna I'm have potty excited. mouths. Everyone's yeah. gonna be sleeping with everyone. It's gonna yeah, be big uh, birds. Gonna be. Oh, oh, I'll stop. I love sesame. What color is this wedding? Red. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, they want to add more children's content, so it's not all, like, doom, gloom, murder, and satanic dungeons. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Why yeah. not? Yeah. You mentioned you worked with your brother on this project. What was that like for you? <laughs> it was, it was beautiful and horrifying at the same time. Like, we were, like, getting in fist fights in Montenegro, and, and then, you know, like, crying and holding each other at, like, the beauty of, 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 and realizing the magnitude of what we had done. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's... It was wonderful and insane. Fist fights in Montenegro sounds like a good follow-up yeah, documentary. Right. There could be a movie about that. The world of underground bare knuckle boxing. No, I'm really proud of it. He directed the, the project, and it was hard to. It was a really challenging job, and I mean that. You know, it, we're in a time where like more and more people are going like, oh, just make your own thing. It is so hard. It is so hard, and we we do need support of like you know networks and 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 studios and so we can't be out there like you know uh criticizing the process and i mean it yeah, when, the way hard. the way it breaks down yeah it's just i think about just sharing ideas and collaborating and i see that happening more and more and, and i'm seeing a lot of um, a lot of great things i mean i'm actually not really in the business i'm back in school i'm just i'm a 34 year old freshman in college right now so i have what's been, your major um sociology cool so my role right Hot. now thank you yeah. a couple sociologists in the crowd um i'm kind of taking a little bit of a step back from from acting and and um and working on on that and maybe finding some new stories in there yeah no that's amazing but you mentioned uh kickstarter and i think something like that is very interesting because it democratizes sort of the creative process anyone if you have an idea 
and other it resonates with other people, you can get it funded, you can make it. What was your experience like with a crowdfunding platform like that? Well, again, I mean, I, I don't want to sound pessimistic because it, we're here and it's amazing, but it was really, it was so hard even with that. Like, we, we raised all this money on Kickstarter and there were still so many more, um, so many more things we had to pay for. And if, I, if we hadn't had the resources and the ability to kind of, to get there, I don't know what would have happened. Like, the project would have died. And so I, I think that, again, just to sort of underestimate that, that the system, the system isn't perfect, but, but you need to, you can't just say, screw everyone, I'm just going to do it my way, and, and um, because it's, it's really an elaborate process. I mean, I never knew how many things went into, like, making, making a movie reel or a TV show, you know, and whether it's just, like, endless, like, cl close captioning and, and, and the, the sound edit and the this and the this, and it was, like, everywhere I turned, it was, like, another $3,000 here, another $3,000 here, another $3,000, and, and you need, you need such a village. You need, like, a... It's it's a huge process, and um, so I, I mean it's a great process, and I'm glad that I did it. Like I said, but um, but I also appreciate just being fucking hired on a great show, yeah. and so I will never poo poo that exactly. that side again. Oh, you guys are taking care of everything. Great. Yeah. Well, I know there's a lot of people here who are, want to get into creative fields themselves. Maybe they are starting out in their careers, uh, whether it's making a film, being an artist, being an actress, something like that. Do you have a piece of advice you would give to someone who's entering these fields, or, some, or maybe something you wish you knew yourself when you were starting out? Wow, that is so... Because when people ask me, how did, it, how did I get involved, I barely even know. I put myself in the city where... My, my first step was putting myself in the city where it happens. And then little by little, I had, you know, I, I moved to L.A. when I was 17, and I was around it. So, you know what? I mean, I started by doing stand-up because I thought, I don't know how else to get going. Not that I was that amazing at that amazing art, but I had the balls to get up and yeah. Oh, it's a terrifying it. thing to do. The most terrifying, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and then somebody saw me, and little by little, it was just doors, doors open. You just... Put yourself out there first. It's hard because it wasn't like, hi, I want to act, and they're like, yes, come on in. They're <laughs> right like, everyone way. does. Or I'm sure everybody has a script, but it happens every day. But I don't think that it's that much harder than becoming a doctor. Like, any anything that you love and want to do, I think is hard. This was, how did you get into this? How did you get here? I applied on the internet, and oh. then had the skills to back it up, I hope. Yeah. Did you know it wasn't... I, no, actually... Easy. I started doing on-camera stuff because I was the only person in my company at the time who had a passport, and there was a junket, so I got to go. And then it's been great. So if there's an opportunity, seize it. Hold on yes. for dear life and never let go, like a remora on a shark. Yes. I, yeah, I would say, I mean, not that I'm saying something brand new that's like reinventing the wheel here, but it's so about balance. And again, I, I don't want to sound like I was being negative about being independent and rogue and renegade and like taking things, but you have to you have to be rogue and renegade and, and you also have to like conform to certain things. You have to be extremely confident and extremely humble. I mean, it's that balance of like, you know. The balance of life, really. It's the balance of life, yeah. boys and girls. And awesome. you heard it here, it's yeah. important. Exclusive. <laughs> and I do think that there's, not to get woo woo, but I do think that there's something to seeing it happen for you like see yourself it's like dress for the job you want not the one you have it's not going to get handed to you but i do think that if you believe it it will event it may take a long time but if you believe it and if it's meant to be like if you think that that's what you're meant to do i think you will ultimately end up doing it yeah i don't know if you're going to win an oscar or if you're going to have a star in hollywood walk of fame or if you're just going to get to do what you love but i I truly believe that it will eventually happen. Yeah, and there's a lot of people here that want to be Wolverine. Man, I think See, it's that's where I'm a little. I'm a little less on that front. I don't, but yeah, I. You're right. If you're saying if you just believe that you're gonna act somewhere yes. somehow, then yes. you'll do it. Sure, but not. I mean, three people are gonna be Wolverine. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. In my lifetime. Yeah. Um, and so I, I also am a big believer in like, you know, and. Like go where you're, where you're, not just welcome, but where you're loved and where you're, where you're good at something. And and I mean, not not only that, you can definitely try find, to break down barriers. But 
Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. Don't fucking take life advice from me. I'm just a, <laughs> I'm just a 34 year old freshman in college trying to figure it out. Um, but it, it, the business is such a tricky one because people come to me all the time and they're like, so how do I do what you did? And I'm like, are you kidding me? This was such a crapshoot. I was nine years old. I tripped and fell at my brother's audition and got a bloody nose and like, here I am and I'm so grateful for it but it was so by accident and like right. what was the key to like me getting these jobs as a young kid like I was a punk I was a I was a you know 10 year old tomboy who punk. would like go into like the biggest producer in Hollywood and be like um you're keeping me waiting buddy you know and like it was <laughs> that kind of uninhibited thing that like made them go ooh or you look at like Jennifer Lawrence or you look at but then at the same time, it's like, you can't walk around and go like, oh, that's going to be my model. I'm going to go do that. Because people will hate you at the same, if you don't do it right, and yeah. it's not authentic. So You can emulate others' examples, but still be true like to yourself. Like a study. Yeah. Yes, and, and what happened to you, that is like the stories you hear about, but those, what happened to you is actually the most rare version of it, right? Like, where it's like you were, like, you didn't even want to act. You were like, what? They were like you, and you're like, what? All right, fine. Like, whereas well, most I people like, like, I want it, I'm going for yeah. it. Like, that's all I mean. Well, yeah. And then you worked. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the initial discovery. Yeah, but don't you hear a lot of actors that are like, oh, someone came up to them in a, I don't know, at a car wash. Yes, but I still think, like, when you see how many... <laughs> How many are out there in the world? For sure. That's the oh, for that's sure. the magic sure. story that we oh, love to hear. Oh, it's a beautiful craft, and people yeah. study and go to school, and and I mean, exactly. like, look at for sure. But um, but it's one of the few jobs that you can study it for 15 years and graduate yeah. top of your class, and it will not guarantee that you're going exactly. to get be a crazy. star on a TV yeah. show. So. How how did we get here? It's like a thank you, it's Jesus. A, yeah, it's a it's yeah, it it's, it's a weird, awesome surprise. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Uh, Just have, like Banshee was for me this summer. Speaking of weird, awesome surprises, Banshee. Get all that girl. Yeah. No, um, I thought I was gonna go to summer school, and Jonathan Chopper called me, and this was like the dopest excuse yeah. to not go to summer school to come and get to play with these awesome people for two months in yeah. in Pittsburgh. That Meet sounds. Meatballs. What's that? And, and he, he, balls. he did. That sounds way better than summer school. Ladies, thank you so much for joining thank me today. I really appreciate it. So Guys, much. give it up one more time. Eliza Dushku and Ivana Milicevic. Thank you so much. And uh, we have more stuff coming up later today. But uh, yeah, keep it going. Enjoy the rest of your con. And yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Talk to each other. Make friends. Turn to the person next to you and say hi. I know it's New York, but yeah. you might, they you. might be really cool. And you might do something cooler tonight that you aren't going to do otherwise. Yeah, tell them it's your greatest fear. It's my last bit of worldly advice for all you nuts. <laughs>